back to the Mars Curiosity Rover replica. Let's machine this differential bar using a custom fixture with super glue so that we can do the, almost the whole thing in one operation. Welcome to our Wednesday widget. First up, saw cutting some material to size. We're actually gonna use the exact same bar stock for the fixture as we are for the part. Giving it a quick deck with the Superfly. And we had to make a few of these, so the fixture on the left has actually already been used. So what did we do? Here is our part. If I expand the CAD tree and I turn that part off, you can see the fixture below it. We took the profile of the part and we did an offset in so that the boss on this fixture is slightly undersized, and that's important because that's going to let us backside chamfer this in the same setup. Throwing some super glue down on this, we have since tweaked our super glue recipe. We're using a slightly different tape that we find works better. We also found a different super glue that works better when you're using flood coolant. One of the things that we want to do is further test that. When can you really use it in flood coolant, or when do you run the risk that the flood coolant will penetrate the tape and won't be reliable? Throwing it in our mod vise, dialing in with our Heimer, and we're off to the races. Decking it down with a Superfly. We like to choke up on the Superfly tool so it keeps it at a smaller diameter. And even though it's not a balanced tool per se, we're able to run it at 4,400 RPMs or 2,900 service feet per minute and really cook with it. And it doesn't seem to degrade the finish whatsoever. Next up, a boatload of spot drills. It looks like one of those pneumatic engraving machines or dot peening machines. Letter F, drill, to drill out that main center hole. And next up, a number 21 drill, 200 surface feet per minute, 2,000 feet per rev. No pecking, just drilling straight through. Next up, a ton of these relatively small holes. Fun fact, there's a new feature, a relatively new feature in Fusion. I edit this operation. We can see that it's a number 23 drill, about 73 thousandths of an inch. When you go over to geometry, we're using the select seam diameter. So we've only got to pick one hole and it finds the rest. Down at the bottom right of your screen, that'll tell you it's 88 holes. Actually super useful sometimes for either checking or understanding uh, if you've got the right thing selected and you've got these new really nice containment boundaries of sketches or sizes or Z heights that can let you control more specifically which holes you want to drill. Pro tip, if you've got to drill a lot of holes, small or big, head over to McMaster Car, type in drill, choose drill bits, drill bits, and scroll down on the left side and choose the 135 degree. Short length, metal, we'll pick aluminum in this case, even a number 21. There's two really great benefits to the, this style drill that McMaster Car does a good job of explaining. Number one, the split point keeps that drill bit centered without a pilot hole. You do not need to first spot drill that. The second is that the point angle produces a smaller chip, which can help evacuate those chips. Still relatively inexpensive drills. We love them. If you want to up your drilling game, though, and you're willing to invest in a carbide drill, on McMaster, type in drill. We'll choose drill bits, drill bits. Scroll down and change the point angle to 150. That will automatically limit your material to carbide. And we'll take a look at the one I bought before, say like the 730 seconds. It's a $35 drill, so it's not inexpensive, but these are carbide drills. You can run them harder, you can run them faster. They have a split point, so they do not need spotted. They're multi-material use, three flutes, and they do a great job evacuating ships. In my experience, you can drill up to five times diameter without even pecking on these drills. Doing a 2D adaptive now to clean up everything around the outside of our part. We did reduce the width of cut to 10% of our tool diameter, just taking it easy because the super glue method does work really well, but you need the surface area. If we hide our part and expose our fixture, 
click on that face and hit I, you can see we only have about six and a half square inches. It's not that much surface area. My general rule of thumb that I like to think about is if I've got a five inch by five inch area, I'm pretty good to go to, to be pretty aggressive on the super glue. And in fact, card here to the video where we did some experimenting, you can really wail, but five times five would be 25 or four over four times more surface area than we've got here. So again, the answer is just back down our cut. We're keeping our RPMs and our feed rate the same, just reducing the width of cut. A 2D adaptive for the left and right side, because if we take a look, those wings are slightly below the Z height of that boss. Some people don't like the look of the tool marks left by the adaptive. Sometimes I think it's pretty cool, but here's a quick tip to change that up. Go to 3D parallel, and that works fine, even though this is a 2D or a flat surface. We've got our quarter inch end mill already selected. Under geometry, I'll pick this silhouette. Click OK. And that runs this tool path left to right. We can edit that. We could reduce the step over to say 50 thou. And that's gonna control the aesthetic or the look of that part. You could also come back here to passes and change the direction from zero degrees to 90 degrees, which will rotate the passes by 90 degrees. Or you could even create kind of a checkered look by checking add perpendicular passes, and it'll actually go both directions. It can almost look like a type of engine turning. Really cool look, really easy uh, tool path to do. Stepping down to a 1 8 inch end mill with the 2D adaptive just to rough out the areas around that hub. Go in a horizontal to clean up that final finish that we don't have that adaptive. Again, you want to ch change the way that looks. Uh, horizontal isn't always my favorite look, so jumping into a parallel or even doing a 2D contour with a stock offset is a really cool trick. So I'll show you that 2D, 2D contour. Hold down the Alt key on your keyboard and left click just that first contour. Now I'm not holding down anything on my keyboard. I'm going to left click on that blue line, let up, and I've got these options. It's on open contour, that's what I want. So I'm gonna move my mouse over, hover over this line, and see how it automatically selects the rest of that chain, or is in black rather. So left click once, you can see I'm starting with blue, going to black, ending blue, that's fine. Click accept current contour. Now I've got that contour I want. So that looks complicated, and I do think it could be improved, but it's actually not that hard to do. I'll show you again at sort of my normal working speed. Alt click. and we're done. Now in this instance, I'm gonna reverse the arrow because we wanna cut on the other side. Click OK, and it would just do a single 2D contour, which is not what I want. I wanna mimic that pattern along this edge. So what I'll do, under geometry, choose stock contours. I'm gonna pick this section as my stock, and under passes, say roughing passes, I'm gonna say step over 0.05, number step over is 200. You know, some large number that's more than you need. It will self trim to the stock itself. So you can see now we have a sort of self collapsing set of lines, which if that's the look you're going for can actually be pretty cool. Opening up that final bore to size, we had drilled this earlier with the letter F and we didn't spot it, but again, we're cleaning that up here. Some top side chamfers. And one of Jared's newest favorite things is this backside chamfering. We got this one from Lakeshore, back chamfer tools, three flute, I believe this one is the 240 awesome tool. What you're able to do here is walk around, and that's why when we designed this fixture, we designed it with the fixture side to be slightly under so that we could get that backside chamfer on there in one setup. After we're done, heat, acetone, or a side blow with a hammer can knock that part off the fixture. Again, that's the great thing about the super glue with the tape. The tape increases the strength, but also means you don't have any residue to clean off your part. And we're done. And again, I love this project. It's science, it's Mars, it's aerospace, it's robots, it's for a museum, for kids. 
Just such a cool project. Shout out to Beatty Robotics for letting us be part of it. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.